Good evening, everyone. I'm very excited to be here with you all tonight. My name is Sabre Moore, and I am the Executive Director of the Carter County Museum in Ekalaka, Montana. I'm also a founding board member of the Montana chapter of the International Dark Sky Association and a site steward for Medicine Rock State Park. As some of you may know, Medicine Rock State Park was recently recognized as a dark sky sanctuary, and I'm here to tell you what that's all about. I was lucky to grow up on a ranch in Wyoming where I could see the Milky Way on a clear night. I have fond memories of finding the constellations with my family and learning their stories. During my first summer in Ekalaka, I saw the Northern Lights dance across the night sky of Carter County, and I knew the area was truly special. After moving here in 2016, I came across the International Dark Skies Association and realized Medicine Rock State Park would it be a perfect candidate for the Dark Sky Places program. Over the next few years, the museum established a partnership with the park, and I worked with Chris Dantic, park manager, and Brenda Moss of Visit Southeast Montana to make this goal a reality. In 1883, Teddy Roosevelt visited the Medicine Rocks area and is quoted in his journal, Hunting Trips of a Ranch Man, stating the future state park was as fantastically beautiful a place as I have ever seen. Located in southeastern Montana on State Highway 7, Medicine Rock State Park is 330 acres, 3,379 feet above sea level, and encompasses grassland prairie interspersed with sandstone formations that date back to the tertiary period, 63.5 to 64 million years ago. Thousands of inscriptions carved into these pillars chronicle a 2,000 year interaction between humans and the landscape, including members of the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne nations. Many of these inscriptions are associated with historically significant individuals organizations, and events. In 2017, the park was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in recognition of this history. Today, the park is frequented by travelers and local residents of the nearby towns of Ekalaka and Baker. Hiking opportunities abound, and the Carter County Museum and Montana State Parks regularly co-host dark sky events and lectures in the park each summer. The park is open year-round with day use from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Overnight stays of up to two weeks are allowed with 12 campsites on a first come first serve basis. Currently, there are no lights present within its borders. The nearest light at night is generated at Medicine Rocks Ranch, located adjacent to the park. The park is located within Carter County, which has a population density of 0.2 inhabitants per square mile. Medicine Rock State Park meets the requirements for certification as a dark sky sanctuary as outlined by the International Dark Sky Association. Sanctuaries must be a public or a private land accessible to the public in part or whole that is legally protected for scientific, natural, educational, cultural, heritage, and or public enjoyment. Purposes. The site must provide an exceptional dark sky resource where the night sky brightness is routinely equal to or darker than 21.5 magnitudes per square arc second. This park, whose stewardship is the charge of Montana State Parks, is public land preserved and protected through its designation as a national historic place. It also meets the eligibility concerning regular visitation as a general public can visit the park year round, weather permitting. Watch out for that snow in August, if that ever happens, and definitely in April. I took measurement of the sky quality at Medicine Rock State Park during non-consecutive seasons over a two-year period from three separate locations, the group use area, Sunset Loop, and North Rock Trails. These measurements average 21.97, which exceeds the International Dark Sky Association's requirement for an average measurement of 21.5. Now that the park is a designated sanctuary, it is our responsibility to safeguard this extraordinary dark sky resource for future generations. Montana is blessed with patches of still dark rural night skies. If light pollution would just stop growing, Montana would be in better shape than most states. But light pollution just keeps spreading. Worldwide, light pollution is expanding at double the rate of population growth. In the US, light pollution is increasing at 6% per year. And in Montana, all of our light pollution has spread across our big sky since 1880, the year that both Charlie Russell and artificial electric lights arrived. Just a few generations ago, everyone in Montana enjoyed a pristine night sky filled with stars. Now, 80% of our citizens live under light polluted skies where only a few of the brightest stars are visible through the sky glow. 
and the Milky Way is missing. At the same time, light pollution wastes money, compromises our ability to safely walk and drive at night, damages our health, and threatens native wildlife. We can do so much better with common sense solutions at little or no additional cost. So, what is light pollution? It's any adverse effect of artificial light at night. It comes in three main forms, sky glow, glare, and light trespass. Sky glow is the dome of brightness on the horizon that obscures our view of the night sky. It is caused by misdirected light scattering through our atmosphere. Here we can see the sky glow of Tucson to the right of the image and dark skies revealing the Milky Way to the left. Have you ever driven down a lonely road at night only to be blinded by oncoming high beams that someone forgot to turn off? You've experienced glare. Glare is when light enters our eyes at shallow angles, causing pain and restriction of the pupil, reducing visual acuity. Who here has been kept awake by light streaming into their bedroom window at night? Me too. This is a prime example of light trespass, when light is falling outside of the property boundary onto another property or home. We can think of light trespass as a private property rights issue. Light pollution has myriad negative consequences. From turtles to humans and everything in between, there are many reasons to protect the night. Ecological impacts. Hatchling turtles are affected by light pollution. Before the advent of artificial illumination, hatchlings always oriented themselves toward the ocean by the brightest part of their field of vision. Historically, this was the ocean, reflecting the brightness of the moon and stars. Now, however, hatchlings get confused and disoriented as they clamber towards city lights. Birds are like moths in, this, in that they are attracted to the light. Birds also migrate using celestial navigation. When birds are confronted by large, brightly lit skylines of urban areas, they become disoriented. Not only are they attracted to the light pollution of the city, but the sky glow obscures their view of the night sky, which they use to find their direction. Birds will fly toward the light, and if they don't immediately collide with the building, they are reluctant to leave the lit area and return to the dark. They may fly around in circles until they drop to the ground with exhaustion. It will still be in danger of mortality. A bird dropped into the depths of the canyon of city lights is in an unfamiliar habitat, susceptible to starvation, dehydration, and predation. There is data that estimates up to 100 million to a billion birds die from collisions with buildings in North America each year. Trees are even affected by light pollution. Those exposed to artificial light at night bud earlier, lose their leaves later, and have shorter lifespans. You can see how the distribution of light on these trees has affected their natural cycles. Energy waste. Light pollution is also a waste of money and energy. About 35% of lighting worldwide is wasted light, shooting straight up into the sky. When we do the math, we spend about three to seven billion dollars a year on wasted light, while adding 21 million tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere each year. Human health. Humans are not untouched by this phenomenon. Humanity evolved on this planet with reliable cycles of light and dark. The addition of light into what has always been darkness disrupts our natural circadian rhythm, the internal cycle syncing our biological clock with the day-night cycle. Our circadian rhythm is, meditated, is mediated by the hormone melatonin. Secretion is suppressed when we are exposed to light at night, specifically blue-white light, that mimics what we experience under a daytime sun. This disrupts our health, exemplified by the fact that exposure to artificial light at night has been linked with an increased risk for all types of cancer. The AMA re issued recommendations to shield streetlights and use light that is 3000 Kelvin or lower to help deal with this issue. Heritage of dark skies. Until just a few generations ago, all of our ancestors experienced a night sky brimming with stars a sky that inspired us in science, religion, philosophy, art, and literature. A natural night sky is our universal heritage, yet it is quickly becoming a mystery to more and more Montanans. Our grandchildren should be able to see the Milky Way or witness a falling star. 
Most studies show that increasing the light level does not decrease accidents or crime. And in some studies, more light actually led to more crime. Adding more light might increase our perception of safety, but it is unlikely to make us safer. On the other hand, dark sky friendly lighting does make it safer for us to walk and drive after dark by reducing glare, improving our visual acuity at night, and allowing our eyes to see what is in the shadowed areas. This picture is a great example. So, have you had the experience of being under a truly natural dark sky? Who here has seen the Milky Way? Who thinks they have to drive the farthest to see it? Unfortunately, today only one in 10 people in the world live under skies that reach that level of darkness. All types of light pollution are increasing rapidly. These images show the progression of artificial light at night as seen from space. It's not hard to imagine a world without any remaining natural darkness at all if we continue at our current rate. Want to know the quality of your night sky at home? There's an app for that, Community Science. Globe at Night is a free web application that asks you to identify which image looks like the most like what your sky looks like. Dark Sky Meter is an app that uses your camera's phone to document the quality of night sky. This one is 99 cents, the first 99 cents I ever spent on an app. Both send your data to a global database of measurements that help us to better understand how light pollution is proliferating across the world. So we know light pollution is a problem and that it's increasing, but light pollution is the only pollution we can solve at the speed of light. Each individual action makes a difference and we can work to create changes on a larger scale that benefit everyone. There is a simple solution, better lighting design. This design has four elements, shielding, color, intensity, and warranting. Aiming lights down at the task at hand dramatically reduces glare, increasing visibility, and better illuminating the intended area. Shielding lights also means the need to, for use of less light as you aren't wasting it into your neighbor's window or up into the sky. Therefore, you can use less light and save yourself a mon some money on your energy bill. The color of light is important. Light color is measured in Kelvin, and dark sky best practices recommend only going as high as 3000 Kelvin to minimize the blue, amount of blue in the light. This is healthier for human and environmental health. Intensity and warranting are also two important, often overlooked aspects of lighting. Even if we shield every light, there will still be some light reflected up from the ground. To minimize this, only use the amount of light needed for the task at hand and make sure that a light is really needed in the first place. This is called warranting. If a light is there just to look pretty, maybe take it out and try seeing how pretty a natural sky can be. A great example here in Ekalaka is the Carter County Museum's security lights. We were able to talk to Southeast Electric and have our intensity dialed down and lo and behold, our solar Christmas lights started coming on at night. Is your home nature, neighbor, and night sky friendly? Download an inventory form at this website and follow five simple steps to find out. The IDA created this new program to help homeowners and renters improve their lighting. Most people will find that a few simple changes can lead to home lighting that is both beautiful and functional without contributing to excessive light pollution. If you are looking for dark sky friendly lighting, check out IDA's fixture seal of approval program. There is an online searchable database where you can find dark sky friendly lighting of all types. Also, look for the seal when you are buying lighting at your local hardware store. The International Dark Sky Association protects the night from light pollution and it promotes responsible outdoor lighting. We are the leading organization working globally to protect the night. IDA has chapters, delegates, and affiliates across the globe. You too can get involved. Reach out to me for more information. It's really people like you who make the difference. IDA is a small nonprofit and our impact is made through our network of advocates across the world. You can join us. If you don't want to join as an advocate, you can always join IDA as a member and support us in that way. For more information or to join the Montana chapter, visit the links below. They will also be in the description on YouTube and here on Facebook. 
In 2021, the Carter County Museum, in partnership with Montana State Parks and the Montana chapter of the International Dark Sky Association, will host four dark sky events at Medicine Rock State Park. All programs begin at 7 p.m. and will include kids' activities, guided stargazing, and much more. Thank you, and please reach out to me with any questions or if you are interested in being involved. The next Carter County Geological Society meeting is in February, the first Thursday at 7 p.m. So catch us right here on Facebook. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>